This is an update video to all the changes to VoxelMax. If you aren't familiar with VoxelMax already, I suggest watching the intro video first, then coming back to this one to learn about the new features. Check that out up here. The first thing that you might notice is that the layout has changed a bit, with tools now located in the left corner. This should make it a little easier for people to make all of their tool, mode, and palette selections with the left hand while keeping a stylus in their right hand. You can also toggle to left hand mode from the settings screen, which no longer uses a three finger tap shortcut, but is accessible from the view cube menu. With the update to iOS 13, three finger gestures are now a system wide shortcut for undo, three finger swipe to the left, and redo, three finger swipe to the right. Also new with iOS 13 is a system-wide light and dark mode. So now VoxelMax will use whichever appearance you select in the display and brightness settings. Back to the bottom corner, there are a few new features. The first is a list of recently used colors. Up to six color swatches will stack above the palette button, with a number indicating the rendering layer they used. This can be very helpful for quickly toggling back and forth between colors and materials while painting a model. Between the palette button and the brush buttons are two new controls for randomization and pressure sensitivity. The T gear is for texture and the C gear is for color. Tapping them will turn on randomization, indicated by the solid center becoming four dots. Texture randomization removes half of voxels for a rough appearance. Color randomization mixes the selected swatch with the next one down on the palette. Pressing and holding on these two buttons will reveal the pressure sensitivity menus, which used to be in the app settings. Now, you can drag up or down to adjust sensitivity for brush size and color without having to leave the app. Moving over to the tools, there is now a fourth control point. Create, Erase, and Paint all have the Move and Resize controls, while Select had to Move and Clone. Now, Select also has the ability to freely rotate objects. Keep in mind that this rotation is destructive, so each time you rotate anything other than 90 degrees, the voxels are recalculated and the edges will deteriorate with each additional rotation. In presenter view, you now have the ability to select the background color to set the right mood for your scene. You'll notice that the button to go back has changed to an icon saying OBJ for the object editor. After pressing it, it now says SCN for scene editor. That's right, VoxelMax got a major update to include a new scene editor. You can see that the bounding boxes automatically shrink to the objects inside, so you don't need to worry about trimming. In the top corner, there are buttons to add new objects or remove selected ones. Then there are buttons to group selected objects, ungroup a selection, and navigate up and down through nested groups or enter an object. You can have up to 10 layers of nested groups. In the bottom corner is the selection menu and tools. There are buttons for creating a new selection, adding to an existing one, or removing objects from a selection. Pressing and holding on any of these three buttons will display additional selection options. The top button allows you to select a rectangular area instead of tapping on objects individually. The tools are a bit different from the object editor. Move and clone work the same, just on a full object scale. Rotation, however, is non-destructive and actually rotates the object off the grid instead of revoxelizing a shape. Double tapping on an object to re-enter the editor will align your view to the rotation so you can edit the voxels normally. If you have multiple objects selected, the active object will be the center of rotation. The active object is whichever one is selected last, displayed by an orange highlight. For the flip tool, drag across the desired axis of an object. Just like with move and rotate, this only affects selected objects. Any unselected clones will not be changed. Speaking of changes, if you edit a cloned object, all the clones will be updated to match. Currently, there is not a way to separate a clone as a unique object, but this is planned for a future update. The Align tool can be used to snap an object or group of objects to line up with the center, sides, or edges of the active object. Finally, with either Move or Clone tools selected, two new tools appear, Distribution Linear and Distribution Bezier. With several objects selected, you can distribute them equally spaced along a line or a curve. The start point is the active object, 
and wherever you tap or drag is the endpoint. Dragging with the Bezier tool will let you set the midpoint third, and the curve is adjusted automatically. With the clone tool selected instead of move, duplicates of all the selected items will be created and distributed using the same linear or Bezier techniques. And that brings us up to speed for all of the Voxel Max updates this year so far. Be sure to follow the Voxel Max channel for more detailed tool specific tutorials. Thank you.